No, there is not dirty laundry behind my chair. I don't know what would make you think that. Hi, my name is Grayson. I go by Critera Online, and this is my channel. Uh, today I wanted to make a video that kind of helps you if you're having any issues with Krita. It's a great program, it's free, but a lot of people when they first start out can feel a little frustrated because the program has a bit of input lag or it has a crashing issue or something else along those lines. There's also a problem with you can only undo 30 times before it stops letting you undo, which is kind of frustrating, especially if you're working on something bigger. I was super frustrated when I first started working with Krita. I was like, well, maybe I'm just gonna have to pay for Photoshop. But it's fixable. I had to look all over to find this stuff. No, that's not how it should be. And then I was thinking yesterday, because my friend came to me with the same issues that I was having, and I was able to just fix it super quick for her. Um, what if I just made a real quick video that shows you guys that might be going through the same thing how to fix it. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, in this video. I'm just going to take you through some simple fixes that make Krita a much nicer program to use and will get you getting creative without having to take a ton of time to get over all of those issues. Also, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like the video. Just let me know that it did help you out. And if you have any questions, anything that I didn't cover, anything that you feel like you would like to know about the program, leave it in the comments and I can tell you some more information in there. Without any further ado though, I'm going to stop wasting your time. Let's just get into how to fix these things. Okay, so for the first thing that you want to do if your computer is having some issues running Krita, if it's crashing, if there's a lot of lag, like input lag, uh, go into settings and click on configure Krita. This page will come up and under general uh, you want to go to display and this is the most important part of like this entire thing is right here you're gonna have an OpenGL uh, label like an uh, option there's gonna be an auto option which is OpenGL click the one that's not OpenGL I think that runs on your hardware which means that it it runs better from what I've heard it just makes the entire program run better I don't know why it's not the default so use that um, make sure you do that and then there's some other things you can do to make the experience nicer for you. So under general, go to miscellaneous, and in here there is an option for auto saving, which I don't know if it's on by default. I'd turn it on if you wanted to not lose your stuff if it crashes, you know? Uh, and then for your undo stack size, change that to something bigger. It's 30 by default, which is terrible. Um, if you change it to zero, you have infinite, which is really nice if your computer can handle it. Um, my computer's kind of old and not super good, so I am keeping mine at 100 because I find that that's good enough for me. Uh, you could probably get away with 200, 300 if your computer's decent. The next area that you're going to want to go to is performance. And in here, change your memory limit from 100% to 50%, uh, unless you have a really small amount of RAM, then I keep it up. But eight eight gigabytes of RAM is good enough for me. Like it makes it to where it runs well. My friend was having issues with their program crashing a lot, and I think that it was because the memory limit was up at 100%. It would hit the 100% memory usage, and then it would crash. I don't know that for sure. Don't come at me in the comments. Um, but I just know that when I brought mine down to 50%, it helped. So do that. Uh, keep it around 8 gigabytes or I'm sure 4 gigabytes would be good as well. Just set it to something below 100% and that should help. Once you've done that, I would go into tablet settings. Now this is, this is purely for uh, just personal preference. You can do whatever you want here. But I find that if you have a curve that looks more like this, this kind of angle, then it makes it a lot nicer to draw on your tablet because, I don't know, the pressure just feels more like a regular pen. And I thought this might have just been me, but I told my friend to do it last night, and she also reported that it... <laughs> reported. She also said that it felt a lot better. So if you want it to feel more like a real pen and less like a stylus that you have to kind of like really press to get that high pressure on, uh, do something like this to get that 
pressure feeling more like a real like felt tip pen. All right, so now uh, go ahead and press OK. If you had to change, since you had to change your renderer, most likely go ahead and restart the program. Uh, just close out and reopen it. And then once that's done, uh, we can get on to the other little bits that can help you with Krita. All right, if you did that, welcome back. If you didn't, you're still here, hi. The next thing that I suggest you do is uh, add on this little view right here. It's called the Overview tab, and you can find it in Settings, Dockers, Overview. Just click that little checkbox, and it should pop up in your window like this. What you're gonna wanna do is just take it and move it over to where you'd want to dock it. I have it on the top right and then I have it over on the right side so I have my layers, tool options, and overview here. Uh, when you're drawing you can just keep it on the overview and what that does is it lets you see your drawing from far away even when you're all zoomed in. So if you're right here then you can see how that affects the overall drawing and it actually it shows you where your little window is so you can see which portion of the drawing you're looking at real useful. I use a couple key bindings that are not in here by default, but they're extremely useful. So go into settings, configure Krita, and then under keyboard shortcuts, type in mirror image, or just M, and mirror image horizontally right here will come up. I set my key bind to control shift X that doesn't interfere with anything or if it does it interferes with something that you'll never use um, unless you're like super advanced but set it to Control shift x and that'll uh that'll give you the ability to mirror your image horizontally now what does this do you might be wondering um well i mean it's in the name it lets you mirror your image horizontally so why is that useful because let's say you draw a little character like this, right? You're just like, woo, look at look at my little character. He's terrifying. Um, that might look good to you, right? But if you do Control Shift X, you'll see that it's kind of leaning to the left. And now it's leaning to the right. That's how I originally drew it. I had it originally kind of leaning to the right. And the thing is, almost every artist, no matter what your skill level, you have some sort of lean to your work. My drawing teacher in college told me that you can mirror an image to determine like what's wrong with it. If you feel like something's off about your drawing, you mirror it and then it helps you to figure out what is wrong with it. So like I said, for mine, it's leaning a little bit so I can just tilt it like that. And now it's pretty good. The face is still shifted a little bit, but I can, I could fix that. I'm not going to though, you, you, you get it. So something you'll notice that I used is this little lasso tool. It, it's something that a lot of people use. Um, it's super common in art programs, you have it in Photoshop. It's it's down here on your, uh, on your tools. It's this little freehand select. It's called Outline Selection Tool. And by default, there is no hotkey for this. I set mine to L because lasso tool. So set yours to whatever key binding you think would be nice to have or whatever you're used to with the other programs. So then you can then you can move things like just the eye, right? And that makes it super nice. So the other tool I'm using is the transform a layer or selection tool. And what it lets you do is it lets you transform a layer or selection. So whatever you select, you can transform it in any way you want. And it's super useful. I use it all the time. Um, that is much better than just the move tool because you can you can move it around and you can manipulate it however you want. When you're working with the transform tool, uh, whenever you're done moving it around or manipulating it however you want to do it, uh, press enter and then it'll get you back to your selection thing and then do control shift A to get rid of your selection. Now there's something you can do with the transform tool that's really nice. Let's say that I wanted this entire guy to be leaning backwards, right? Like he's like he's laying down on a bed. You can do control T and then while it's on rotation, do hold down control and then you can get him to lay down in perspective. Right? So you can you know have a have a little character who's laying down. It's 
So it just hold down control and then use the rotate function and that'll let you rotate it but in perspective instead of just in two dimensions like you normally would. Now there's just a couple other key bindings that you really need to know if you're going to be working in Krita and that is holding down space. While you're working you can hold down space to pan around the canvas. That's just that's just holding down space and clicking and dragging moves your canvas around. If you do control space that lets you zoom in and out by going up and down with your uh, pen and then shift space lets you rotate. So you can see how it can be used to uh, to really get in areas and and work with it. And then when you're done with all of your rotations and everything, if you click 5 it resets the rotation to 0 degrees, you can see right here. And if you click 2 it resets the zoom so that it fits the canvas onto your screen. Um, you can use the square brackets just like in a lot of other programs to increase and decrease your brush size. And yeah, that's, that's how I use Krita. So, um, I hope you found this helpful. I hope that the little bug fixing thing that I told you at the beginning uh, helps to make your program run smoother, and I hope that your workflow can be improved with these little simple tips that I've given you. Thank you for watching.